In the last few years, we have seen some major changes in how Blender is perceived by the 3D art community with its new tools and features. Surprisingly, this change had ripple effects on one of the biggest companies like Autodesk. If you don't believe me, then why we are seeing serious updates of their software like 3ds Max after a decade of neglect? And why introduce in the version of Max and Maya just around the time when Blender 2.8 was released a few years ago and became super popular? Some people think Autodesk is afraid that Blender might take their share in the market. Or is it really? Before we continue, if you want to learn animation in Blender, one of the best places to start is the 2 animate animation course. If you are a beginner, you don't have to worry about it because the course is divided into beginner, intermediate, and advanced levels so you can take away the best knowledge for your current level and learn at the pace that you are comfortable with. You will learn how to create amazing animation shots that help you stand out with 70 plus animation lessons updated on a continual basis in addition to dialogue clips, feature quality rigs and assets, community access, and technical assistance. So, if you are interested, you will find the necessary links in the description. Since the release of the iconic Blender 2.8 release, things have changed in so many ways when it comes to how Blender is perceived by 3D artists in general and industries such as game development and VFX. With new cool features such as better modeling tools, better render engines, whether it be Cycles or Eevee, which is a real-time render engine, in addition to geometry nodes and simulation nodes and other interesting features. Basically, Blender completely dominated the market of 3D users for personal use and hobbyists. So whether you are a hobbyist or a freelancer working from home, there is a great chance that you are using Blender, unless you are an industry professional working from home or freelancing. In which case, you probably want to stick to the tools you know best, whether it be Max, Maya, Cinema 4D, or Houdini, which is great too by the way. When it comes to the indie market, I think that Blender gave Autodesk a strong blow in their entertainment and media division because indie game developers and small VFX shops would rather not spend so much money on expensive software licenses, which makes sense. In 2019, Autodesk made changes to the licensing models for some of its most important 3D software, including 3ds Max and Maya. By introducing indie licenses, for me, the timing seems a little bit sus because it is around the same time when Blender 2.8 was released and took the world of 3D by storm. On a side note, these indie licenses are tailored for individual artists, freelancers, and small studios that don't have substantial revenue. While Autodesk hasn't openly acknowledged that these changes are a direct counter to the rising popularity of Blender, I think there are underlying reasons to believe that Blender's trajectory in the 3D community has influenced Autodesk's decision. The interesting thing is that Blender, with its open source nature and zero cost, has experienced significant growth in its user base. I would say there are millions of users, particularly among indie developers, freelancers, and small studios. And I believe what made it more attractive is its consistent updates, especially in the recent few years driven by community feedback, which equip the software with advanced features and tools that are increasingly competitive with those found in industry standard software like Max, Cinema 4D, Maya, Houdini, and so on, to a certain extent. For many users, especially those in indie studios or small production pipelines or small VFX shops, Blender's offering presents a fantastic alternative to the traditionally expensive licenses associated with Autodesk products, especially before introducing indie licenses. Recognizing this shift in the landscape and the damage this might cause to their bottom line and to remain competitive and appealing to a broader spectrum of users, Autodesk might have felt the need to reconsider its licensing strategies, which are not very liked to say the least. The introduction of indie licenses can be seen as a move to bridge the gap between Autodesk software and the emerging users drawn to Blender. I guess that there is a huge surge of new 3D artists that was generated in the last few years because of Blender since it is free. This may or may not be true, but I think that 
by providing a more affordable entry point, Autodesk is essentially trying to retain and attract those who might be considering or have already transitioned to Blender, primarily due to financial constraints. If you ask me, paying a yearly subscription of $300 is far more better than paying something close to $2,000 just for one software. Also, you need to keep in mind that the industries using 3D software are evolving. So with the democratization of 3D tools and technologies, there has been a surge in independent content creators, whether it be in video games, animation, VFX, and so on. I can't help it but notice that the days when high-end 3D production was limited to big studios are fading, and Autodesk surely understands the importance of catering to this growing segment of independent creators and small VFX houses and game development studios. But I don't think this is the only reaction Autodesk had to the changes happening with Blender and the 3D community. I believe Blender's development played an important role in the recent development and updates of some Autodesk software. So Autodesk's response to the increasing capabilities of Blender likely involved a strategic overhaul of how they update their core products, 3ds Max and Maya to be specific. Rather than relying on their historical pattern of annual releases, which was taking place for the longest time, Onodesk began to roll out more frequent updates, which allowed users to access new tools and improvements at a pace similar to Blender's rapid development cycle. As you may or may not have seen, in an effort to maintain their position in the market, in the last couple of years, Onodesk focused on pushing the envelope with innovative features and tools within their updates. At first, it was ridiculous, and 3D artists didn't like it at all, but things got better over time. So Maya and 3ds Max started to see enhancements in user-requested areas, such as user interface improvements, performance optimization, and expanded functionality in core areas like modeling, animation, and rendering. In fact, Autodesk introduced a roadmap of development that shows the new features and tools that are gonna be implemented in the coming months and years, which is really cool to be honest. These updates were not just about adding new features, or more of them, but also about refining existing tools to be more intuitive and efficient, mirroring community-driven evolution that Blender has been benefiting from. And I personally believe they should have done that earlier, I mean, like, many years before that. Performance improvements were also a key area for Onodesk, ensuring that both Max and Maya could manage the increasing demands of modern productions, which are evolving all the time, to be honest. Now, to answer the important question, I think the best way to measure whether Blender is becoming a problem for Autodesk or not is the impact it has on its bottom line, especially in the entertainment and media division. For freelancers, small size or medium studios, cost is often a significant consideration. And Blender's $0 price tag presents an attractive alternative to the recurring subscription costs associated with Autodesk products. This is particularly relevant for freelancers and indie studios that need to maximize their returns on investment. And even though Autodesk has taken a step to make software such as Max and Maya more affordable, I mean with their indie licenses, I think some users are gonna still choose to try Blender. Individual artists and indie studios make up a large portion of the creative market, and a shift toward Blender could lead to a notable decrease in Autodesk user base in this segment. I personally think that it is hurting their bottom line, or at least there is a risk of this happening, otherwise they wouldn't have offered the indie licensing prices, because it is a business after all. Also, one important thing, Blender's improvements and community support mean that the quality of resources of learning and using the software has increased as more professionals use it. The ease of access and knowledge and community-generated content can make Blender more appealing to newcomers in the industry, who might become proficient in Blender's tools rather than those of Maya or 3ds Max. Over time, as more artists become accustomed to Blender, the industry standard could begin to expand with Blender joining the industry especially if large studios start adapting Blender in the response to the growing pool of Blender-efficient artists. And this is taking place slowly but surely. So Blender can be a threat to Autodesk at least in the future, and at least in the entertainment and media division. To be frank, Autodesk is a huge company, 
with its tentacles spreading industries such as manufacturing, engineering, industrial design, architecture, and more. And to be precise, the entertainment industry only represents about 10% of the overall revenue of Autodesk. 10% isn't small, but I hope you got my point. So, I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.